A new study out of Cedar sinai has found that a breath test can actually help diagnose what's bothering your stomach. The study found that many sufferers of IBS actually also suffer from small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, also known as SIBO. And now that patients can be better diagnosed, doctors can better treat their symptoms, of course. So joining me now is Dr. Mark Pimentel, one of the creators of this breath test now with more on what it means for the millions of Americans who suffer from gut issues. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to be with you. Thank you for well, I, uh, being here with ahead. us. Uh, the study revealed a third type of SIBO. So what does this mean for folks? Well, SIBO is the, that the small intestine, which is the longest length or part of your intestine where food is absorbed, uh, that 15 feet, it builds up too much bacteria. But what we didn't know is that there were three different types. There's a type with hydrogen gas, which we can measure on our breath, methane, which goes with constipation, and the newest gas is hydrogen sulfide. So when hydrogen sulfide is elevated, you get diarrhea. So now we know the three what we call microtypes or subtypes of bacterial overgrowth, and we can attack each differently. But these patients suffer from abdominal pain, they suffer from bloating, and it affects 10% of the U.S. population, which is an incredible number. And this isn't just as easy as like, okay, we'll drink some kombucha or uh, eat more yogurt. What treatment options are available for all three types of SIBO? Yeah, well, so in, in, in essence, you have too many bacteria. So putting more like kombucha or, or, or probiotics from yogurt may actually be the wrong thing to do for these patients, even though it's healthy for most of the rest of us. So uh, you have to see your doctor because you need to get a test. And there's a test that can measure all three gases now, which is available. Uh, you know, you can do it at home. And, and then once you know the gas, there's a different uh, strategy. One, mostly it's antibiotics, but there are other things that your doctor can recommend that can make this better as well. Wow. And tell me a little bit more about that low fermentation versus uh, additional fermentation with the eating choices. What do we what do we need? What don't we need, especially for SIBO so, sufferers? Yeah. So while it seems completely opposite to what is a healthy diet, it is it's not when it comes to SIBO. So, for example, when you eat foods and you put them in your a small intestine, they're meant for you. But now all of a sudden you have all this bacteria there and they want to eat it. So if you eat foods that are fermentable, like high fiber or, or beans, the bacteria of the small intestine, there's so many of them now that you start to get symptoms from eating those foods. So what you want to do is you want to restrict those foods and only eat the things that you can absorb quickly. So we call that low fermentation eating. You're eating foods that don't sit long enough to ferment by these bacteria while you're trying to figure out and treat it and also to prevent recurrence of the, the bacteria that we were talking about earlier. What are some things that would let me know I am a SIBO sufferer versus something else? Yeah, so the most important symptom of, of patients is that they have a lot of bloating, gas, and distension, especially after eating. And so they have to loosen their belt or they feel like their, their stomach sticks out. Obviously, seeing a doctor is important because there could be other reasons for that, but that's the most common symptom. And then, of course, changes in your bowel pattern where you, where you could be either constipated or diarrhea or both, depending upon which gas you have, which we can now sort out. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Pimentel. That was a very uh, intriguing discussion. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you.